Becoming a professional photographer involves more than just learning the fundamentals. The best photographers in the world are able to find beauty and express it through their photography. Welcome to Shutter Speed Photography Challenge. Everybody here is so unique and diverse and they're really amazing at what they do. A show where photographers compete to earn their place amongst the masters. Looking forward to seeing how close I can get to it. I've never done this before, so this is going to be really exciting. Out of six contestants, only one will walk away with the grand prize. I am determined to win, and I'm going to do whatever I can to get to the end. A free spot on Mark Hemmings and James Wilson's San Miguel Photo Workshop in beautiful Mexico. I'm Mark Hemmings, and this is Shutter Speed Photography Challenge. Photographers, welcome to the first challenge. You've been gathered here because we believe that you have what it takes to win this competition. Now, out of the six of you, only one will be crowned best overall photographer. And that winner will receive the photographer's trip of a lifetime, a free spot on the Mark Hemmings and James Wilson San Miguel Photo Workshop in beautiful Mexico, worth over $7,000. Now, on each challenge, I'll be joined by a guest evaluator. Ladies and gentlemen, I am privileged to introduce to you professional landscape photographer, Nate Gaffney. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Photographers, how are you? Good. So good. good. So I never dreamed that I'd be able to be a photographer uh, full time and to do this as my career. I've shot things professionally from fashion to portraiture to landscape and to nature, but I do have to say that the challenge this morning is still one of my favorites. Which leads us to the first challenge. Photographers, we want you to take the very best landscape photo possible. It could be a wide panoramic shot, it could be a silhouette, but we want to see your technical ability that you can use to impress us. You'll have one hour to take the photo, to edit it, and present it back to us. You'll be evaluated on composition, technical skill, and originality. And the winner of today's challenge will be named Best in Landscape. But the photographer who fails to capture our hearts will be asked to walk off into the sunset alone. Uh. <laughs> Photographers, your one hour starts now. So I'm Sam Kaminsky. I live in Fredericton, New Brunswick. I do mostly portraits. Uh, that's kind of where my passion lies. I'm also really into like adventure photography. I love to, you know, push myself out of my comfort zone and, and create in unexpected ways. I want to get the moodiness of what we have right now with the fog that's rolling. So it's keeping it kind of dark. My name is Shalini Tawari, and I am an underwater photographer and a travel writer and photographer. Sometimes you can take a picture of a landscape and you'll see it, but then when you add that little aspect of a person in the shot, you really get how vast the area is. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm from Moncton, New Brunswick, and I've been doing uh, various types of photography for about five years. I picked this spot because it was uh, a little different from where everybody else seemed to uh, pick theirs. I am Alicia, and my photography business is Hand Call Photography. I'm a mother, I'm a dental assistant, kind of balance the, the work life, the mom life, and the photography life. Yeah, keep them one foot in each door. I shot here before, and there's a rock formation actually right here. My name is uh, Paul Owen, I'm from uh, Hampton, New Brunswick, and uh, I do a lot of photography. I uh, started out with astrophotography, and I'm doing a fair bit of landscape photography now. Finding out that day one was landscapes was definitely a little bit uh, nerve-wracking. I'm Wes. I've been a photographer for seven or eight years now. It's wonderful how it's constantly evolving and always interesting. There's always something new to learn, and that's 
one of the great things about this competition is that we're with other talented people and we're being forced into situations where we have to learn and grow and push, so it's fantastic. So Nate, I know a lot of our photographers here are really into portraiture, probably much more than landscape. So how do you think that's going to play out considering they're thrown into this rock solid landscape? I think everybody, because of that, is going to have a different approach. I think people who maybe are familiar with landscape could have a similar approach where, you know, you show up, you look for shapes, leading lines, all of these interesting aspects. Maybe someone who's more uh, familiar with portraiture could have a different approach entirely, so maybe we'll see six totally different photos. So I'm walking out and I see this big, beautiful landscape. My eye is immediately drawn to these crazy, jagged rocks and all this uh, seaweed that's draping over it. And so I get my adventure boots on and I get down um, kind of near by the water and I, I'm not afraid to, to take, the, take a few risks in terms of you know, putting myself in risky positions. So I've decided to go low here, and I feel it kind of lends itself to really showcasing what we have here in New Brunswick, just like such interesting seascapes and coastal um, views, and, and what is it like when you actually, you know, come down to the level of, the, of nature and, and get involved, like immerse yourself in experience. I'm walking out to location, and the water is just amazing, being so close to that is just so wonderful. I'm trying to frame in this piece to uh, give a little bit of a foreground aspect to the, the landscape image. Trying to find the right light balance, the right foreground versus background, and the contrast of all the colors in front of us right here on the beach. With landscapes, it's hard to decide what the subject actually is. With this reflection though, it's nice because you get a lovely symmetry of the top and the bottom. The sky is just white and there's almost no detail, whereas these trees are pretty dark and to try to balance between those two is going to be difficult. Hey Paul. Hey Nate, how how's you it doing? going? Good, good. How's it going? Good, really good. Good. How long have you been a photographer for? I started photography at all, in general in astrophotography, so shots of the night sky and that sort of stuff. So that's where I, I learned patience in editing. But doing this stuff has been about three years, and it's just been an, an exponential growth because I'm just like a, a learning sponge. I just have to keep okay. Well, how does that work, and how does this work? Yeah. What does this prize mean to you? It's a pretty big opportunity. That would probably be like the most major thing that could happen, you know, for me in a, in a long, long time and for, for photography. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you've picked a good spot. It's unique. I didn't see a lot of people over here, so hopefully that's on your side uh, when it comes time to evaluating and judging, but uh, best of luck to you, and I'll see you in a bit. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. Sam, you picked a crazy location. <laughs> I feel like I was ready to fall off to my death. Tell me about this location. All right, well, I was originally really attracted to the texture from all the seaweed. So I wanted to kind of get this like cascading curtain yeah. in the foreground and then use that landscape there in the background as kind of in the back. But then something was definitely missing in the photo. So I had one of the other contestants, Mark, come in and he was my subject. He's a little itty bitty and then you see this giant kind of like falling rock with this curtain of, of seaweed and then you have the land in the background. Interestingly, yeah. Your competitor could actually help you win. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky for me, everybody here is pretty nice and everybody's willing to help each other out. Tell me about the stakes involved in this. For me to be able to be here with you and even the other contestants, I think they're so talented. So to learn from them and to just like learn their stories and learn their background and, and see their vision a little bit, to me, that's a win already. <laughs> I love that you threw a model in there. It was very unexpected, yeah. actually. <laughs> so I'd like you to continue, make use of your time, get that perfect shot, and I'm looking forward to seeing awesome. it. Awesome, thanks, Mark. Photographers, you have 30 minutes. Time to pack up and get editing. laptop definitely overrules in certain areas. If I can use my laptop, I will. Um, but it's definitely really convenient, especially when I have the SD card reader, that if I'm on the go, I can just kind of pop it in, get a couple out when I need. But yeah, so I, I'm kind of in between.
editing landscape and editing portrait is definitely different, so you're, you're getting the real time, <laughs> real time information here. So my computer just died. I'm not sure what to do. I've got my cell phone. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. I've never edited on the phone before, so this is going to be quite interesting to see if I can pull this off. So I'm going to try to highlight that and see if we can't make that work. OK, photographers, you had 30 minutes of quality editing time. It is now time to shut her down. Please close your laptops and your devices. OK, Nate, we're here. We're going to be looking at the editing portion of this competition. And this is my favorite part, because we get to see exactly what the participants have done. So first of all, we have Alicia. Interesting choice, I think, to use a portrait orientation for a landscape photo. However, I think in this setting where we're looking at landscape photography, it, it would have been more beneficial, I think, to have this as a landscape orientation for you and I to be able to see, well, well what's going on over here in, in this side of the environment? What's going on over here? I kind of want a bit more breathing space above yeah, this tree. Absolutely. Otherwise, I am tending to want a horizontal for a landscape, mainly because traditionally that's the way it goes. Now, the next picture, this is interesting. This is from Mark. Now, Mark's image makes use of a person. Now, this is something also that we, we said, you know, full creative control, do whatever you want. Tell me what your thoughts are about adding a person to the landscape. Adding a person to the landscape gives you a sense of scale. And I love this photo for that reason. I agree completely. It's a very wide angle lens, so the choice of lens was appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I think that overall, it's a strong contender. Absolutely. Now, this one is from Paul. Now, Paul had a little bit of uh, editing issues, and this is really part of the job of being a photographer. It's, you know, down to the wire. Yeah. However, he did succeed in getting us the image. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, a very strong foreground element. What are your thoughts on foreground elements within a landscape? When we had gone down to the beach first, I was looking at all the seaweed and I, I thought, okay, somebody's gotta make use of this because there's so much texture, there's great color. Obviously with the shape of the seaweed, you're getting leading lines and all of these boulders that he chose to put in his composition. So I think uh, comp he thought about this composition really well. He thought about the shapes, the lines, and where it's all leading to. I would say as a base image, the composition's really strong. I would say a little bit more is needed in the post-production phase. Yeah. OK, so the next one is from Sam. Now, Sam made use of the, the model switcheroo, which I thought was really clever. They teamed up. Yep. And this is another example of scale. I like the concept, right? Mm -hmm. The whole thing about scale, yeah. um, that against you know the actual size of the cliff. However, I think the placement of the model uh, was just a little too high in the composition. Yes, I agree. And also, I would prefer you know, to have a horizontal shot, to be honest. Yeah. OK, so let's go to this next one. This is from Shalini. Mm -hmm. I like the composition. I think that the sky is a bit too blown out. This is a, a post-production issue for me. I agree. I think it's too bright for me. However, I do think that this photo is giving us details of, of the beach that we haven't seen yet. If you zoom in, you can actually see um, kind of all, all of this tidal life that's yeah, existing, right. and, and you don't get to see that in some of the other photos. Yeah, and to be able to see all of these periwinkles or whatever they are, yeah, it's, it's just great. It's interesting, yeah. Okay, so the last picture is by Wes. Now, this, this is interesting because this is our first black and white. Now, what are your thoughts on monochrome in landscape photography? Uh, he chose to put all of his attention out into the water and onto these cliffs. And not only that, he chose to go black and white, which builds a lot of drama. You can see in the sky here that there's a lot of detail in the clouds. So you know it's an overcast day just by seeing that portion. The uh, choice of using um, a long exposure to build drama leading up to this, this center, I think that was really, really smart as well. It adds an entirely different um, uh, technical skill that we haven't seen yet. So we have both technical and we have the aesthetic in this picture. Yeah. I agree with you completely. And I think that black and white and landscape is unbeatable. Yes. OK, well, I think that this has been a really good session. And I think you and I are on the same page. But we do have a tough choice to make. I think it is a tough choice, but I, I do think I am ready. Let's make that decision. Well, I have to say, after this first challenge, you all knocked it out of the park. The nature park, that is. <laughs> Your challenge today was to take a landscape photo that truly stunned us. And you all succeeded. But out of those six photos that you presented, 
one of those photos stood out above the rest. That photographer will now be named Best in Landscape. And now, the moment of truth. Today's episode's Best in Landscape goes to... Wes. I felt like it was <laughs> quite a gamble, so I was really worried there. And uh, whew, I guess it paid off. Congratulations, you are now guaranteed to continue on with the Shutter Speed Photography Challenge. Yeah. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by PhotoEd Magazine, one of Canada's best photo publications. And the winning photo will be featured in the Land Issue. And as a consolation prize, if it's your turn to go today, we have a special gift for you from PhotoEd Magazine and a one-year subscription to the magazine. Speaking of which, sadly, for one of you, it's time to put your lens cap back on. So the photographer who didn't have a golden hour today was... Alicia. <laughs> Alicia, you gave it your best shot. Then please pack up your bags and head home. Ultimately, being the first one going home wasn't the ideal scenario that I wanted, but I just, I feel very grateful and lucky to have been here in the first place. Well, photographers, that challenge was incredible. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with during the next challenge.